All right, let's call the meeting to order. Um, we don't have anybody that's going to be excused absent, so we don't need a motion for that. So let's move into roll call. Uh, Susie? Uh, here in Lathrop Village, Oakland County, Michigan. I'm Dan Sugg in Lathrop Village, Oakland County. Brian? Brian Ford? You're on mute, Brian, if you're talking. I don't think Brian can hear us. Let's go, Mark Watts. Yes, Mark Watts, Lathrop Village, Michigan, Oakland County. Thank you, Mark. Pam Bracci, you're on mute. You're on mute, Pam. <clears throat> Oakland County, Michigan. Brian, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Brian, can you please tell us where you're located and what county? Brian Ford, um, Oakland County, Mi Michigan, Wixom. Awesome. Fred Prime? Uh, Lathrop Village, Oakland County. Awesome. Pam? Pam Shermeyer, Lathrop Village, Oakland County, Michigan. Shyla? Shyla Beltor, Letra Village, Oakland County. Cheryl? Cheryl Natalterio, Letra Village, Michigan, Oakland County. Great. Rami? Rami Sweden, Letra Village, Oakland County. Wonderful. And Bobby, I see you're connected. Are you there? Can you hear us? <clears throat> Uh, Dan, I'm sorry, you, I cannot hear you. Is, is there a... Can you uh, Dan, you sound very far away. No? No, is it my microphone? Is that better? I think so. Slightly. Uh, let me try my audio. Hold on one second here. Uh, uh, Bobby, we're doing roll call. Can you... Uh... Can, can you tell us what city, county, and state you're in? Uh, Bobby Lovins. Um, I'm in Lathrop Village, mm -hmm. Oakland County, Michigan. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that any better or no? No. All right. How about that? Is that any better? No? Yeah? I can yell. I guess. Can you hear me now? Oh, sorry. All right, let's let's uh, let's just jump into this. Maybe we can get through this. I apologize for uh, any audio issues we may be having. I think we have everybody on board. So let's move into approval of the agenda, <clears throat> which was uh, in the package. Can I get a motion to approve? I move to approve the agenda. And a second? Support. Pam and Fred, all in favor? Brian? Yes. Pam? Yes. Fred? Yes. Kyla? Yes. Uh, Bobby? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. And Mark? Yes. Awesome. Um, all right. Now that the agenda approved, hopefully we've all had a chance to review the minutes from the October 15th Board of Directors meeting. And if there's not any questions or additions or corrections. All uh, three pages of them, if, if we're all good with that, can I get a motion to approve and accept the minutes? Dan, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Looks like I had a motion to approve to Bobby. And do I have a second? Second. From Pam Schirmeyer. Great. Um, all right. Financial review. <clears throat> 5A. So, uh, Susie, what do we have here? Or Pam Bracci? 
Well, there's nothing much that has really changed. I don't remember if I brought to your attention that the tax tribunal returns were over budget and that's due to the JC, JNC properties. They had a state tax commission ruling which lowered their property values on the properties. The, all, the other thing that I have to say is the DDA is in really good shape with their expenditures being at 42.9% of budget right now, which is um, December would be about 50% we should be at. So they're in good shape right now with their expenditures. Is there any questions or anything? Just uh, want to say thank you for including the income statement. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. anything else to add though I think uh, that pretty much summarizes up so the biggies anyways okay uh, I didn't have any questions does anybody have any questions on the financials Susie is that audio any better or no yeah I just I switched to this thing I don't know if that helps but yeah, we can you hear you. Like better. Larry King now, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine is the crazy. Hair. That's All right. Um, okay, cool. All right. So, uh, if everything looks good on the financials and there are no further questions or clarifications needed, I will seek a motion to accept the October financials as presented. I'm right, motion. So moved. We got Brian as a uh, move, and I think Pam is support. Is that correct? Yeah. Pam sure. Is support. All right. All in favor, Brian? Yes. Uh, Fred? Yes. Pam? Yes. Shyla? Yes. Cheryl? Sure. And Bobby? Yes. And Mark? Yes. Beautiful. All right. All right, now we're up to the good stuff. Committee reports. EV, what's going on in EV? All right, all right, scooting up. Um, so uh, as we talked about in the past, EV will take over capital improvements. Um, so last meeting, we just looked over our work plan to prepare for in December. Our city engineer, Scott Ringler, will be talking to EV about capital improvements. Prior, like we're prioritizing, we're gonna go over that that alleyway assessment. Um, talk, you know, start prioritizing. What are we gonna do? Um, we also just got, um, we've had some comments lately about the um, pretty deteriorated condition of the not existing ditch and culvert for uh, right adjacent to the post office. So I'm sure that'll be part of our. Um, part of our conversation and um, just trying to figure out, you know, where are our priorities for the next uh, few years in terms of infrastructure, so. So that's pretty much it for EV. Um, in the new year, I think there'll be some more updates and bigger updates coming from EV to look forward to. Um, if anyone has any questions, otherwise I'll go straight into promotions. Um. I see a note here on the Zing training and I saw some stuff on the social media where, how did that go? Well, it was a great training. Uh, Bobby can attest to you, came. Um, guys but... out. You guys should have been there. I tell you, it's your loss. It was <laughs> super duper. It was, a, it was a great training. Um, so that was one thing we also discussed is how to get better engagement um, and how to move forward with our workshops. Um, and if we want to, so it's kind of a play it by ear. If it seems that people, if we're gaining interest, we're gonna kind of keep looking forward to it. But if not, then it's how to reevaluate to offer that kind of thing. So uh, we're gonna be talking about a workshop a little bit later, um, but the, the engagement isn't there. So we talked about going, uh, personally calling businesses, mailings and looking at it that way. Cheryl, you had uh, something? Yes, I, I was just going to say um, one thought that just occurred to me is possibly offering either a Zoom workshop or a hybrid. Um, it, sometimes it's easier not to have to do the travel and um, 
be able to participate if you don't have to relocate yourself physically. But it's mm -hmm. worth an effort to try. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah. Marie, did you tape record the Zing training? Do we have a video of no. that? Um, because they offer their own video trainings and we had an in-person one. Oh, I yeah. see. Because I think that Cheryl's point is really excellent. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are always making forum now. Small business associations switched over to that format. So if we could have had a video, we could have put it up on the website. If we didn't. But I think that's a great idea, Cheryl. We can definitely look into that moving forward for our workshops. I think um, I think that's a hybrid model that's going to be around for a while. I was at a conference in Nashville last week, and they offered uh, not the entire conference, but like the meat and potatoes day, they offered a live stream that people could log in and not travel if their if their company didn't allow them to or they weren't comfortable. But there were still three hundred people at the conference, but. I don't know how many logged into the live stream, but sometimes that hybrid model works too. So you both. Okay. <clears throat> I have done the Zing training in the past um, in, a, in a prior life, and it is certainly very worthy of the time. So congratulate Bobby for showing up and hopefully you gain something from it. How many people did you have there? Oh, just over a dozen uh, in attendance. Uh, most of uh most of it was uh, actually city hall employees, so um, yeah. which was good. I mean, everybody yeah. needs a little little uh, refresher on customer service. We did so, but we had Bobby. We had um, actually a few residents that attended, and then um, we had we did have one new business um, attend, and I, I think uh, well, we'll uh, we'll be talking about her proposal here down in the new business in just a little bit. So. Um, so it wasn't, you know, we, we had, we had a mix, we had a mix. Good. All right. I just wanted to go by. I know you guys put some time into that. So, all right. Uh, let's hear from promotions. So this is from yesterday's meeting. I was pretty quick about minutes yesterday. Um, so it was mostly focusing on our events for the rest of the year. So we have Shop Small Saturday coming up on November 27th, and I will give the calendar invites for all three events. Um, Shop Small Saturday is November 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, well, it's an all-day thing, but for us, it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, in the community room. There will be local vendors. Um, we're going to have some food. There will be some crafts outside and some s'mores. So it'll be a fun day. So either stop by or if you can, we could use some volunteers. So if you can stop by for a half hour and help us out, we have a few little stations that we'll need some volunteers at, uh, whether it's some more is outside, giving out some free bags, stuff like that. Uh, tending, tending to the fire, got a poker stick, so you know you won't have to burn yourself. Um, and we are, um, we, one of the things, so I did a big old shopping trip yes, yesterday. Um, after our promotions committee meeting. So what we are, one of the things we are gonna do is um, we're gonna do uh, $25 gift certificates or gift cards to the first 25 people that that show up. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be promoting that. So um, out there on social media, we have a couple ads going too. So um, it ran in the Southfield Sun last week, last week, last week. And then it'll be running in the Southfield Sun again on Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry, get my days all mixed up next week. So, and you did mention that we're full on vendors, right? Yeah, we are. We have twenty or twenty-one vendors, <clears throat> um, and we're at complete capacity. Every day, I'm turning down like ten vendors, so uh, we just don't have the tables or space for more. Um, maybe next year we'll look into actually doing the winter outdoor part and have more people we'll see because i keep getting so many vendors that want to be a part of it um so we're really excited now we just need the shoppers to come so yep and a question about the uh the tote bags are is the plan to give them away yes mm -hmm. okay well my we have a variety of tote bags here okay oh, well. 
Well, oh, sorry, it gets a little, little cozy. Little, um, <laughs> squish. We got um, some bags from the county that we'll probably be giving out as these ones. Every uh, Main Street community in Oakland County. Oh, they're they're paper bags. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a for we have we have the paper bags from the county. We have um, don't mind my dirty computer bag. I mean, this awesome one. bag, our bag. Um, and then um, we also have some bags left over from last year uh, that we can give out in a pinch. Though I'd prefer not to because they're kind of like. Um, from American Express, and then um, the county also gave us some fun stuff. We, I know we talked about uh, talked about doing one of these fun frames. So we got a bunch of stuff from the county yesterday. Okay. Drop. All right. Well, let, let me just raise this one uh, thought. Uh, since since we're giving we're giving the first twenty five people right a twenty five dollar gift certificate. Yep. For the cloth Lathrop Village bags, I mean, my theory is if you if you if you give things away, it 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 devalues it a little bit. But people love to win stuff too. Why not just give them hand them a raffle ticket when they come in, which you can like get at any dollar store, and just raffle off the cloth bags every fifteen minutes. So you know, if they win, they'll be thrilled. Maybe they'll hang around a little longer for the next raffle time. Um, and I, th I think we could get more, you know, bang for our buck too, because I presume the cloth bags cost us something. Uh, yeah. It's not just a sticker; it's a you know, pretty nice bag. Um, so that's that was what I was thinking. That's a great idea. That's Thank you. Good. Yeah, we can do that, and then everyone that comes will get a paper bag that the city provide or the county provided. That's a good. Idea. I like that. Thank you. Um, all right. Anyone else have any? Questions or thoughts about shop small? Oh, we also have magnets. I got one. Right. Yeah, sorry, got a little. It's super cozy in my office. Here we go. We got fun little magnets, um, and it goes to our, our directory. Our directory is having a little bit of a glitch, but I'm working with the website to get it fixed. So those will be given out too, and they go come on your fridge. I have five on my fridge, so. <laughs> I mean, just hit the QR code, get all the info. Really cool. Yep. So. <clears throat> all right. Now I'll go straight to the tree lighting. Um, that is December 11th from 5 to 8 in Municipal Park. That's one of those parks and rec events that we absorbed. Um, and that will be 5 to 8 in Municipal Park. The tree lighting's at 8. Um, there's going to be some hot chocolate probably a trolley um, that will do tours around the neighborhoods. And it's a pretty simple event and it'll be fun. And then Breakfast with Santa is December 18th, 10 to 12 in the community room. Another one of the events we absorbed. Pancake breakfast, come get your pictures with Santa. Um, you'll need a ticket for that. But both those events I'll probably need some help on. So look for those emails. And that's pretty much through the rest of the year. Um, the last item is Juneteenth Task Force is going to be an independent subcommittee of promotions, um, and we're going to do a call for that starting in the winter your town to start planning for Juneteenth. That'd be great. Awesome. All right, yes, Bobby. Oh, Bobby's got a comment. You're on mute, though, Bobby. Bobby, you're on mute. Okay, I hit it like five times. Um, the pancake breakfast Santa thing just reminded me, since the DDA is going to be absorbing the tree lighting and that event as well, the um, Lather Village Lions Club has a pancake breakfast and they do a placemat and they go around to all of the businesses and by and large, you just give them your business card and then they take it over to, um, well, who's the guy, the, the printer guy? I forgot. Over at Zip Printing, you mean? Gary over at Zip. Printing. Yeah, Gary at Zip. Yep. So they take them over there. So I'm wondering if the promotion committee can do a little bit more of a push, seeing as how that's going to be absorbed through the DDA now to um, maybe get businesses to sponsor the placemats or I don't know. We do have um, for this whole, all three holiday events, Michigan First is our presenting sponsor. 
and then Giffel Webster. Giffel Webster is the silver sponsor. Um, so we do have some sponsors and the Lions Club is going to be our little community group sponsor to some degree for mm -hmm. Breakfast with Hannah. I'm working with them. And the Homeowners Association is the community group sponsor of the tree lighting. So we do have a few sponsors for it. Um, and this is still like in conjunction with Parks and Rec. To some right. Degree. Right. Thanks to Michigan First. Yeah. All Dan, he got us a great sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. We'll save that for offline. Uh, we're, head, we're glad to help. Obviously, very glad to help. All right, any other questions for um, the balance of the year for promotions or um, uh, EV, economic? Um, I just wanted to say, I think the banners we ordered are, are very nice. You know, they, they say winter and holiday without being, you know, it's like if, if we leave them up through through the winter, it's not going to be a tragedy that it looks too holiday-ish. Right. Uh, I think very, very handsome looking matter, banners. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Our, um, unfortunately, the, the only downside to the holiday decorations is that like the garland and the lights and the bows and all that fun stuff isn't going to be up until after shop small. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I think it's going to look smashing when it's all put together. I think it's going to look really, really pretty and festive. So good job on picking those out. That was beautification. So that's our little touch that's still going. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. Uh, anything else? All right, Rami, what do you have for us today in code? Under other in business, code enforcement, uh, your October report I see is attached here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, BSNA and I were uh, actually BSNA worked on the commercial enforcement list to get you exactly what you wanted. Uh, not all the uh, headings on the spreadsheet we could fit in the commercial enforcement list from BSNA. So this is basically what you're going to get. If you approve it, that's what I'll provide to you uh, every uh every month but yeah. one thing one thing i did uh, see there was uh, i did catch it's only showing me seven to eight violations every month every uh and on my spreadsheet I, I have 20 violations written up 20 addresses which 10 of them have uh complied and on the commercial enforcement list on the BSNA, it only shows seven or eight, I believe. Seven, it looks like, yeah. Seven, yeah, but it is, it is definitely more than that. Um, I would have to go into BSNA and change the addresses from uh, a normal address to a commercial uh, uh, address in order for me to pick up the violations for the commercial enforcement list. Uh, this is the reason why you're seeing only seven or eight is because not every address is checked off as a commercial. So we have to, we have to work on our part to uh, get BSNA uh, done up and completed. So the address is in the DDA, but not checked commercial. Is that what you're saying? It's in BSNA, but not checked out as commercial. So there's a lot of the uh, addresses uh, we have to go through, or I have to go through and uh, check them off as commercial properties. And then so they'll print. Yeah. And then when I write a violation, it'll come up on the commercial list. Okay. Uh, because I have two lists, one residential list and one commercial. So I have to go in every address and change those. Oh, I'm sorry, so what is BSNA? It's our our software program that we use for building, um, for building code enforcement, treasury, et cetera. It's a whole suite of, of, of programs that we use. Yeah, thank you. So Rami, let me ask you just, um, and this certainly is the level of detail I think we were looking for, and I'll let anybody else a, a tone on that. But so what you're saying is you have 20 total violations, including commercial and residential. No, is that what 20, you're saying? 20 only commercial. 
and 10, 10 commercial properties complied and 10 didn't. Okay, so in your software, the 20 commercial properties, some are listed as residential and you need to get that changed. Some are just, they're not listed as residential, it's just a regular address, but we just have to change and check it off as commercial. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I just want you to know, it's not gonna be an easy task. Okay. Yeah, this, this looks like the level of detail I think we were looking for. Gang, any comments or questions on this? So the spreadsheet, do you want me to stop uh, providing that spreadsheet? No, nope, keep sending it. We'll make sure we we'll send that out again, um, just so they they can see all those. Um, but no, keep the keep going with that spreadsheet until at least until you get uh, things sorted out within the within BSNA. Please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can get it all represented here, then I think the spreadsheet becomes irrelevant. But uh, until then. Great. Anything to note on this list of seven that we have here that we should know about? Or, I mean, our our uh, our involvement here is making sure that just the financial investment that we're making is is working and helping the commercial DDA district. So it's not like we're trying to help you service these properties. I don't know anything about this, but clearly the level of detail, and I can see action here. So I have a question. I'm going yes. to make sure they comply. Yeah, Bobby, what do you got? Yeah, speaking of the compliance, Randy, I'm totally taken aback that you had the number of people who didn't respond. What's the protocol? Do they get like, first you get a like, hey, you know, just a friendly reminder, then you get the violation, and then you get a second notice, or is it cut off? What's your procedure on that? We, uh, we send out two letters, uh, one in the first notice and then the final notice, and then we write them a ticket. That's the process, that's the procedure. Um, there are times when we write them a letter, we give them 14 days, depending on the violations, sometimes 30 days. And if it's a big project like Dan Danny Boy, the uh, property on Southfield, uh, the rehab, that that's, took us six months and they're working on it now. So uh, there, those, that property is going to be off the list probably in November. Uh, okay, so when you said that you had, I don't know if it was eight or 10 that did, of the 20, you had 10 that did not respond. Is that to the friendly reminder or are you saying that that's not compliance to the actual violation itself? No, they're not in compliance on the violation itself. They're wow. not in compliance. So we want them to comply. I think, let me clarify, I think what he's saying, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Rami, is that they may have responded, but they didn't comply with the complaint. They haven't fixed it yet. Right. Still, exactly. yeah. Very true. Some some are very expensive to, to fix, and uh, they need the funds. Some oh. save up for the funds, and some just, uh, you know, wait till next year and uh, to provide the, the correct contract. The accurate contract for so okay wow interesting all right mm -hmm. anything else any questions for rami okay. all right thanks rami i appreciate the work on this and stay on bsna i know it's probably slow but get okay. those changed over so we also use it here so i'm familiar with it i just want to take a moment to to, to thank Rami and Susie for working on coming up with a, a document that is friendly and usable for this committee. Um, it looks like it's a simple process or should be, but it was um, the technical details in the background were a little bit taxing, taxing. So they overcame. So I just want to applaud our staff. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much for that. Good point. All right, moving on, uh, director's report. Susie? Yeah, so um, most of these things we've already touched upon um, over the last um, couple of months. Uh, we, I, I do wanna point out for our grants on there, uh, we are still working with the county on their community navigator uh, program. They, the county itself has set aside what, $3 million uh, for the program. They had applied for funding, additional funding 
uh, through the SBA, uh, which they were not successful in getting. However, they are moving forward with what, what they've got set aside. Um, they've hired the, the, the person that is going to be in charge uh, at the county for the Community Navigator Program. And they are hoping to do interviews uh, sometime in December uh, for each of uh, for each of the communities that will be uh, getting a navigator. So uh, with, the, with an expected start date of January. January. So um, obviously we're still a little sketchy on some of those details, but um, you know, stay tuned, just stay tuned for more information on that one. Um, we've, uh, uh, we've also submitted for, um, um, we have submitted funds uh, for a state level appropriation uh, to install some pedestrian hawk signals down between 11 or between 11 and Lincoln. So uh, they asked for a transformative projects. So I'm pretty sure pedestrian crossings are transformative. And actually, I asked for funds for uh between 11 and Lincoln and then another crossing right here at City Hall. So I don't know when we might be able to expect finding out, but keep your fingers crossed, do a good luck dance, and hopefully we can get some people to cross the road safely. Woohoo! So, um, and then the other super exciting thing on here is that Ruby Lee's Honey Chicken and Shrimp is open for business and it is darn tasty. Um, they also have like a 15,000 pound um, French fry pizza thing that Cheryl can tell you tastes probably fabulous. It looked amazing. So um, it was, that was really freaky guys. It didn't happen up here, FYI. Um, Rami, it looks like you got like your own like weird strobe light show. Um, so <laughs> So new businesses are happening and all of these new businesses that are still on here that are listed, I mean, they are in the process. I mean, they're so close to being done. So, I mean, we've got what? There's two, four, another, another five businesses that are um, like. Excuse me, Susie. Um, yes. Kelly's waiting in the attendee. Oh, um, thank you. I will get her in here. All right, we have. I know that um, I have not been to Ruby Lee's place yet, but honey, chicken, and shrimp are three of my favorite things in life. So I then you will not. <laughs> you're not going to be disappointed. It's quite tasty. Got to get over there. Um, and then, um, real, I guess, real quick. Hi, hi, Mayor. If if you could tell us. Uh, hey, Kelly. How where are you? you're attending from? That would be great, and we'll get you onto the list. Kelly Garrett. You're not on mute, but we can't hear you. I'm sorry, I muted my phone. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm calling. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm calling from Oakland County, Troy, Michigan. Hey, Kelly, welcome. Glad to have you. Um, and then the the one thing I do want to bring up um, is the uh, the sidewalk replacement program. Um, so the, the, the short update is that they didn't get to Southfield Road in its entirety. Um, there was uh, some delays due to weather and some other things, but um, they will be back in the spring and they're going to be finishing the sidewalk replacement program along Southfield Road and in some of the neighborhoods. Um, they, I mean, there was some additional residential streets that they, they didn't hit either. So um, they will be back in the spring to complete uh, year one work, uh, probably. I mean, I know they want to come back in April and bust a move in April. I, it could end up being, you know, May before they're actually allowed to uh, pour concrete. But um, just know that um, they will be back and then we will have, um, we will also be deciding here very shortly uh, which section of 
uh, which section north of 11 mile between 11 and 12 mile is going to get done, whether it's going to be the east side of Southfield Road or the west side. Um, and so the DDA will also have some um, additional sidewalk work for here too. So I just want to let you know that that's going to happen. Um, otherwise, they are finishing up all the infrastructure project work. Uh, they really want today to be their last day um, for the season. So are there any questions? Uh, under, not that it matters, but it says the city was notified that a redevelopment ready community certification is valid through 1130, 20,000, 2,203. Yeah, like that's about right. <laughs> Sorry. 2023. <laughs> I will not be here in that year. Um, I, I don't think I'll be here in 2020, 203 either, but uh, 2023, yeah. I hope to be. Any other uh, comments or questions around uh, the director's report? All right. Um, is there anything separate on the cannabis facility update? didn't have any uh, separate document that I was, I mean, I could have shared the application, but I really felt like it was, um, I wanted to give you, keep that separate from the director's report. Um, but in a nutshell, so there, the cannabis application and scoring criteria uh, was adopted by the, um, the previous city council on November 1st. Um, it has been posted online um, and is available for interested or prospective uh, cannabis facility applicants to start um, gathering their materials for their application. Um, I've already got a ridiculous number of phone calls and emails, which I is impressive given that I already had a ridiculous amount of uh, inquiries from the cannabis industry. Um, also at that November 1st meeting, uh, council has, uh, they set a date of January 3rd for um, January 3rd to February 1st as the application period. Uh, though I am interested to see uh, what our new council what direction our new council may take. Mayor Garrett has her hand up. Yes, so I'll let Kelly add, Kelly's add on her mute. comments to this one. What do you have, Kelly? Keep in mind you're on mute. Uh, yeah, I was in the middle of talking, I'm sorry. Um, so I have a question about, even though we're opening it up on January 3rd, and I know I have been out uh, for a while, um, is that who is going to be on this commission or who is going to be a part of deciding? I know you're getting a lot of calls and a lot of um, inquiries about it, and I'm sure everyone else has. I am not answering any phone calls that the number does not correspond with the name, so I don't know who is calling me or not. But my question is, again, is that have we come up with a committee or was a committee um, uh, made up of who's going to be going through these applications? Do you know? Yes, let me get to, it will be, um, hold on, it's, it's opening for me. Um, so right now, um, we will have, um, it will be reviewed, an initial review for completeness of applications because um, I've made it abundantly clear in the application itself and in all of my conversations with these cannabis um, industry people that incomplete applications are not going to be reviewed. Um, not <laughs> like there's no gray area on that one. You either have all of it or you don't. So um, they will be a, uh, the first check for completeness will be done by the city clerk. Uh, the city attorney will uh, review them a second time um to, for completeness uh they will also be they will be reviewed by the police department 
um, which we are expecting uh, Sergeant Zhang to take care of uh, reviewing those. Uh, from a planning and zoning perspective, we will have um, a representative from Kipples Webster, who is, a, a, it won't be Jill, um, it will be someone else from her office that hasn't been involved in the drafting of the application and scoring criteria, so we can add a level of um, objectivity there. Uh, we will have uh, Jim Wright, the building official, will be reviewing uh, applications uh, from the building perspective, and then uh, a review will be done uh, on the financials and utilities um, by the treasurer, and that's really just to make sure that they are up to date on all of their ob financial obligations to the city, you know, water taxes, et cetera. Um, after they're reviewed initially, applications will be scored by uh, myself, uh, Jill at Gipples Webster, who's our primary uh, point of contact, the city administrator and the police chief. Um, after those are reviewed and scored, um, a recommendation will be made. And um, if there's a tie, it'll be done by lottery drawing. And then um, before our final recommendation to uh, city council for licenses, um, the city attorney will, will look over the applications again and the scoring criteria to make sure everything is in accordance with what we've set forth and then we'll make our recommendation. So, um, and once those recommendations been, have been made, those highest vote, um, those highest scoring applicants will be invited to apply for special land use and site plan approval with the planning commission. And, and they'll have several additional hoops to jump through as part of that. So does that answer your question, Kelly? It does, but I'm also, um, I'm a fortune, a future seller, I should say, and um, this is probably going to be brought up again because um, I didn't hear anybody from council or any um, outside, you know, resident um, input on this. And so have you thought of or have we thought of a way to get um, um, unbiased person who's not being paid by the city whatsoever? to be a part of reviewing these because I'm, I'm telling you, I already know what's about to happen come, you know, Monday of, um, you know, what this looks like. Just to have a plan B of how we're gonna review these. Cause I also am, that's one, number two, I'm also concerned on about the time that it's gonna take for all these people that have other city business that they have to take care of, of how long this is gonna take for them, seeing that if we're getting a plethora of calls in, I can only imagine how many applications are gonna be coming in also. Oh yeah, I, 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 I did an estimate once that we have approximately 40 parcels that may be, uh, that may be eligible and I would expect at least one application per, um, per property. Um, I, I mean, we have built into the, the, the timeline. I mean, technically we have per the ordinance, we have 90 days to review from the close of the application period. So from February 2nd, um, 90 days from that date. Uh, I, and we did talk extensively, um, as we were going through that, um, that we feel confident as the group, and I'm with Cheryl, myself, and uh, Scott, and um, Jill, putting this, uh, putting together the application and scoring criteria, and we felt that we were going to be able to get everything reviewed and scored um, within that 90 days. Um, the we did also consider um, we considered early on involvement from council uh, in terms of scoring and uh, we were unanimous in um, in our belief that we don't think it's appropriate for council to be involved since it would put anyone um, into a somewhat compromised position um, in terms of, of, of scoring and we don't want we don't want to do that for for council um, and we'd like to 
keep you all as objective as possible when it gets to gets to council for a final decision on the licensing. Um, we didn't we didn't really consider asking another another resident um, to be involved in this. We don't um, we don't have we don't have residents come in and review uh, any other applications. So that's we wanted to try and keep it consistent. But obviously, whatever direction the new council takes, we'll flex. We'll flex with. Cheryl, did you no, have anything to add? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, Cheryl, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Did I capture all of that? I think you captured it. Um, I guess I could say that the um, I, the review mechanism isn't spelled out in detail in the ordinances. So if there's a strong sentiment to modify it, I, I don't think it would take much more than even a recommendation or a resolution from council. You might want to check with the city attorney to confirm what that might look like. Kelly, were you suggesting a, a resident or you suggesting somebody outside of Lathrop Village, a completely um, non-biased third party? I'm not, truthfully, Brian, um, uh, suggesting anything. I'm just trying to give everybody a heads up of the conversations that I've already had that um, is going to be suggested is going to come up where it needs to be more resident input in something like this. And so just to be prepared instead of being reactive to be proactive that, you know, maybe we will add, you know, open it up like we do for commissions um, for uh, to have a couple of residents on it. And I understand that we in the um, past haven't had residents involved in you know certain business aspects of, of of things. However, this is something much different than we've ever had for the city. And again, just um, kind of giving you a, a heads up of conversations is just because this is the way that we used to do it doesn't mean necessarily this is how we need to do it going forward. So. Um, you know, again, just trying to just put something in your ear, everyone's ear, of uh, considering, you know, a plan B. And um, yeah, that's it. I personally, I know that um, as the acting mayor now, we'll see what happens on Monday. I think that the reason that we are um, all in place is because, uh, no, thank you. Um, the reason why we're all in place is because we have the best interests of the city at, at hand, and that's the reason why most cities have um, sitting committees, councils, boards, and things like that. However, I know that that is, um, again, something that is going to come up, is that they want more residential um, input. So I'm just trying to get us all prepared for that, because actually, again, if I don't get reelected on Monday, I won't even be a part of the CDA, so I'm trying to give you all a, <laughs> an idea of what's going on. So. I hope I answer your questions and just kind of, you know, update you with that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so what I heard Kelly say is we should have some plan in place if we needed to embody a, a resident panel to review part of the review process. So, so noted. Kelly, you can't get away that easy. Oh, well, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's. Uh, well, this gets completely out of control. Uh, any other questions around the cannabis uh, update, facility update? Yeah. All right. Uh, old business. I'm seeing none. Uh, new business. We have a 2022 DDA meeting dates that is a little bit jumbled. I don't know what happened there, guys, but I looked down again on the board packet and it's not out on the, the website, the Municipal Code Meetings website yet. So I was trying to see if I could print a different one, but. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there either. Did the pack come out? Oh, oh, so this was, was this for our approval or was this for awareness and then? It's for approval for 2022's uh, moving forward with the third Friday at noon. I'm just scared. I don't know how that um, happened. Yeah. Again, sorry. I'm not sure why that happened because when I published it, that box wasn't there. 
uh, or when I uploaded that file. So um, the PDF, it must have got yeah encrypted. No. Uh, well, the long and the I mean, we don't you don't need to approve your the committee meeting dates. Um, so luckily, those are just there for your information, and we'll make sure you have um, okay a, a more clear one. You, you will need to. Uh, you do have a decision, a couple decisions to make on the 2022 board meeting dates. However, um, the first and, and Corey has these highlighted uh, April 15th is um, actually Good Friday. Um, so uh, you have a, your, your choices are to move it to either an alternative date or um, just cancel that meeting. Um, and then uh, we have in the past, uh, last year we can't, we, we can't, or this past year, this year, this year, we <laughs> we canceled the August meeting. I think the year before we canceled July and August, um, and we've had some discussion about um, we've had and so and we've even had discussion about uh, making permanent um, at least one one month during the summer where we don't have um, a board meeting. So. Those are those are the decisions you need to make, and then we will need to adopt um, adapt the calendar. I know here uh, we are a private uh, industry, but we we don't meet in the board in February and August or the two months that they don't meet. But um, obviously, what what month do we approve the budget in? What when is generally April May? Yeah. Um, The, the April 8th is the Friday before and April 22nd is the Friday after. Well, is anyone opposed to not having an August meeting on the calendar or July? Would you have a preference? Just feel strongly. Do you want to just leave them all on and cancel them as needed? I think that Bobby, yeah. I see your lips moving, but we could certainly do that. Yeah, I'm saying leave them all as is and then just address it as it comes. Yeah, just as needed. Um, as, I think as, that's go ahead. All right, and then the April one, uh, we can't do Good Friday. So I would say move that to the uh, 22nd. Anyone opposed to that? All right. All right. All right. Just we just need a, a motion then to ad adapt the meeting schedule with the April change. Um, All right. So, uh, can I get a motion to approve the schedule amended, changing the April meeting to the 22nd? I'll make the motion. Kelly's motion, anybody second? I'll second. Uh, I think Brian to the buzzer. So Kelly and Brian second, all in favor? Brian Ford? Yes. Fred Prime? You're on mute? It never gets old. <laughs> Still on mute? There you go. All right, Fred. Pam Schermeyer? Yes. Shyla? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Uh, Bobby? Yes. Kelly? Yes. And Mark Watts? Yes. Dan Sugg, yes. All in favor. All right. Meeting format. Yes. So um, we will we will be moving uh, in 2022. Uh, we're going to be going back to in-person, it looks like. So um, I guess I mean, we do have a one. I'd like to find out um, what your feelings are on being fully, fully back in person. Um, there's, I suppose, the possibility of hybrid meetings, but I don't know what the state, um, what the state's going to say yet, um, in terms of having hybrid or any sort of remote 
uh, option for, for boards. So yeah, what, what are your thoughts on being fully back in person? Um, oh, I, I think it's premature. I mean, we're now, uh, isn't Michigan leading the nation now in COVID cases no, as of this week? Yeah, we're doing a pretty darn good job at um, it, right? So. And Oakland County is right up there in Michigan. Um, so yeah, it uh, doesn't thrill me to hear that. Not that I wouldn't love to see your shining faces, but still. Ah, we shine, we shine from video. Exactly. So. Uh, so, uh, it's my understanding that the current legislation does not allow for the remote access and stuff for military um, after December. I don't know if that's going to change. And I also don't know in regards to um, municipalities um, what element of hybrid will be allowed. Um, of course, we can always um, use Zoom for audience participation. What I don't know is if board members or elected officials can participate remotely. Uh, at the present time, it does not appear so. I understood there's legislation pending. I don't know the likelihood at the present time. Yeah. Well, and I think that's gonna drive our meeting format to be clear. I mean, if it says we have to be in person to be a valid meeting, then we'll have to figure a way to facilitate that. Um, and I think to Cheryl's point, we just don't have enough information to make that decision yet. I know it's close, but at the end of the day, we've got another 45 days or so to figure it out. So, well, really 60 days, so. All right, now there's your heads up. I would add, um, I, I probably would plan on in person. And then the next element is, do you want to perhaps use the community room where you can space out further? Um, so things of that nature, so what those logistics might look like, should we need to do that? Yeah, it's a good idea, I think, Cheryl. A um, little bit more room if needed. All right. Any other questions around meeting format until we get more information? Right. What uh, What is the Cheryl Blondie workshop proposal? Early Blondie. I'm actually going to let Corey take this one since I had to hop out of my meeting, our meeting with Shirley. So this is actually, she attended Zing Train. Um, and she is a business consultant slash workshop person. I don't know how the best way to describe it. it looks like she does a combination of business consulting. So she works with a variety of different sizes of businesses. And it sounds like a lot of corporations. She goes in um, and meets with their different departments uh, on a variety of topics. Um, so she met with us uh, to tell us a little bit about some of her workshops. And we have this proposal for a December workshop about um, it's looking forward to 2022 uh, positive positive psychology in the workplace and addressing procrastination. Uh, in the description, you can see the variety of topics that she's looking to do in this two-hour workshop. Um, so this would be a one, another one of those DDA workshops um, that we would offer for our for our community for that. Yes, right, right, for our businesses. And we'll take this approach um, if we choose to do this of uh, personally calling some of our businesses and then potentially uh, we'll reach out to Jim Nelson, our AV cable guy about maybe wow. a hybrid version. Uh, what's the maximum number of people she will talk to? I believe it would be up to like 50. Five zero. Yes. Um, yeah, so if it fits the, the realm of providing value to our downtown development area and businesses, I'm all for it, but we, we got to get more than eight people in the room, obviously, or else it's just not worth it, you know? Right. So I don't know how we, um, 
we don't set a date until we have enough RVSVPs or something. I don't mind the expense. I don't know what everybody else is thinking, but if we can get 50 people in the room, that'd be awesome. Um, but if it's, you know, I love Bobby to death, but if it's Bobby and four people from the city, it probably isn't worth the money. Right. Well, we can talk to it. I like that idea too of um, kind of setting the date or um, you setting the setting the date after we know um, after we can get some level of commitment. Um, and maybe what we do is um, I know she wants to do it in December, but uh, possibly maybe we move it into January since um, this would also um, that would give us a one a little bit more time to. Uh, engage our businesses to get them here and commit to this. Um, what does everybody else think? There's some sample you. of her work that we could view as well. But I mean, 1500 bucks is real money. I'd like to know right. a little bit more about what she's planning to provide. Uh, I do not have a sample of her work. And one thing to note is we would be her first workshop in the US. Uh, she recently moved here from Israel. So most of her work is done in Israel. So mm. uh, we can ask for samples of her of her work to 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 send over to you after the after the meeting. We're happy to do that. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think that would be very helpful as well me. because I mean to be brutally honest, yeah. nobody's going to come to the workshop with just this description. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just too vague. Define and begin new personal goals. You know, it just sounds too generic. Um, I mean, I the, the Zingerman training, I think everybody knew what they were going to begin for. This is, I'm not so sure. Fair enough. All right, well then we'll pick this one back up in our next meeting. All right. <clears throat> Okay, I don't see um, any other agenda items, but we do have a public comment period. Do we have any members of the public or any, any statements? Cheryl, you're on mute, don't forget. Hi, I just wanted to let you know that I have accepted a new position in the city of Detroit and my last day in Lakewood Village will be December 18th. What? Yeah. Sorry to see you go. It's truly been an exceptional pleasure working here um, with Mayor Garrett, our elected officials, and our phenomenal team here of administrators. Um, it's a great group, and I know I'm leaving it in the most capable hands, so I'm excited for Lakeflip's future. Thank you for all of your efforts to date, Cheryl. We really are grateful. Thank you. And obviously, is there a December meeting of the DDA or was that canceled? Uh, we, well, I haven't gotten to that one yet, but I think we're going to can't, we're, uh, I'm planning to cancel it. Okay. So, actually, um, the same okay. day as your Okay. Next. So I, I'll need to submit my um, resignation from the DDA today. So. Okay. Oh. Well, we certainly, I don't know who's going to keep us on the straight and narrow anymore, but uh, as much as I love the rest of these people, we don't know what we're doing. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, some of us do, but I gave, most of us don't. I gave, I gave Susie a taser. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I will do. say, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, go ahead, Kelly. I would say that um, when I was told this, I'm not surprised, was not surprised whatsoever. Um, we are going into a brand new, um, a, a new dimension, as they would say. Is that Star, Star Trek, I think they say? <laughs> you're going into a new no a new frontier um i um am very disappointed to uh hear about you leaving but i also am a true believer in your own mental health and, and making sure that you take care of yourself and i can't express how much i think that you dealt with a lot of things with a lot of graciousness and um a lot of patience and i knew it was coming um, i just didn't know when it was coming and so um, I, um, it's our loss in uh, the city of Detroit's gain. I think that out of all of the city managers that I've worked with, with the exception of one who I will not name whatsoever, you were one of, one doesn't even count to me, but um, <laughs> of the other ones, you um, were phenomenal. And the fact is that you kept your ear to, you, you were in politics and the fact that you gave us information 
that we didn't even know that we did not need or we didn't even know that we needed. And so I don't know how we're going to be able to really find someone that that was that is that involved. And so um, I really um, say kudos to you for, you know, what you've done. And I think that you brought our office back to being a family because we did get derailed for a while. And I think the main person that's even on here for the longest would be Pam to know that we did get, you know, kind of off kilter and now we are back on. And so it, I look forward to the future with trepidation and um, with like, and I can't say all the words I want to say because we recorded and I have lost my um, lady like speaking ability. So I would just say that it's all messed up <laughs> and I, I am curious on what our future looks like. So I just want to say thank you. And I know I'm going to have to say this conversation again. So I'm just trying to learn how to say it without swearing in it and, and things like that. So thank you. And uh, I'm very sad and hopefully you'll stay in touch with us. Yeah, thank you. I echo. Well, Good job. Pleasure working with you, Cheryl. Yeah. I'm certainly going to miss you. Yeah. All right. Well, you still look like you're smiling, Cheryl. So we didn't we didn't convince you to stay. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else for the good of the group? No public comments. No additional. Nobody else has anything to follow that dramatic statement. All right. So um, we're we're good. We will not have a December meeting. I, I don't I don't even envision us having action items. So we'll see you okay. there. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll see you guys on the twenty seventh at Shop Small. We'll be out by the fire and talk to you soon. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks, Cheryl. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.